In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this cool little whittling knife with a cast aluminium handle. Those of you that have been subscribed to my channel for over a year may remember some of my older videos where I've made a couple of whittling knives out of drill bits in the past. Once you forge out the shank of the drill bit, they still have the twist bit of the drill bit inside and that makes a really good surface to attach handles onto since it's got such a high surface area. And it got suggested a lot that I had cast an aluminium knife handle, so I thought that would be a really great video and I finally got round to it. Since I've already got two separate tutorials on how to forge a knife from a drill bit, I'm going to be focusing today mainly on the handle. If you want more detail on the forging process then you can check out either of my older videos on how to forge drill bit knives, the links will be in the description down below. A lot of people ask me why I prefer to make smaller whittling knives like this rather than larger knives which I've made in the past and that's because for the larger knives they take a lot more material, they also take a lot more time and I find in the end the end result isn't as useful as a smaller whittling knife since I do a lot less stuff with larger knives and I do a lot more intricate carving and cutting out of things. Because this knife is made from a drill bit, it's made from some really high quality, high speed steel and that means that it's really hard and it holds an edge for absolutely ages. I also used some new whetstones that I was sent to make this knife absolutely razor sharp. As you can see, you can easily shave with it. So let's get started and obviously the first step is to start to forge out the knife blade and this is pretty simple, I basically just flatten out the shank of the knife. Also, I just want to say, you don't actually have to make this from a drill bit, you can pretty much make this from any high carbon steel. I'm just using a drill bit because I had an old worn out drill bit. And for this knife, unlike my old knives where I used quite a low quality drill bit, this time I'm using quite a high quality, expensive high speed steel drill bit. This is what my knife looks like after the forging, and as you can see, it's pretty rough and needs a bit of shaping. So I go over to my bench grinder and start to grind the profile. As I was grinding, I noticed that there was a tiny crack right at the front of the knife, and this probably occurred because I didn't anneal the blade before forging it. It will probably be fine, but just to make sure, I wanted to tack it up with my arc welder. I set it on a low amperage and just gave it tiny, tiny tacks, making sure to not melt the knife. Once that's done, I can get back to grinding, and now I'm going to start to grind the bevel. and then the knife is done and ready for heat treatment. I'm going to be doing my heat treatment in my electric foundry that I made a couple of weeks ago and I've got a full tutorial on how to make it and this is really good for heat treatment because you can control the temperature exactly but you could also just use a regular forge. However before heat treatment I wanted to anneal the knife properly and normalise it since it's already cracked once I don't want to risk it happening again. This is done by heating the blade to around 900 degrees celsius at which point the blade grain structure starts to repair itself and relieve all of the stresses inside the steel caused by forging out. I then basically turn off my foundry and let the blade slowly cool down inside it and it took around 3 hours for it to cool down below 100 degrees celsius so this was very good for the steel. This is the blade after it's cooled down and now hopefully it's nice and stable and much less likely to crack when heat treated. You can also see that it's much softer than a drill bit would be but still not as soft as mild steel so is the blade still retains some of its hardness. I used files and an angle grinder to make the surface all rough with lots of spikes and holes in it. I also drilled a hole straight through the centre of the shank. This means that when I pour the aluminium over it, it's going to have lots of places to grip onto. Now it's time for the heat treatment and I set my electric foundry to 1000 degrees celsius this time, which is pretty much the lowest temperature that you can heat treat high speed steel at, but I didn't really want to take my electric foundry any higher because I didn't want to risk burning out the coils. I turned off the foundry as to not electrocute or burn myself and then pulled out the knife with tongs and then plunged the blade tip first into some oil. I'm just using some natural sunflower oil but lots of different types of oil can be used. Unfortunately my hand sort of got in the way so you can't really see this. As you can see once I take out of the oil it passes the file test and a knife simply skates straight over the top of it. This means that it's really hard. Normally at this point in the knife making process you would then temper the blade so that it's not too brittle, but since I'm going to be casting the aluminium handle that's going to dump a lot of heat into the blade, so I'm going to be doing the tempering after I've cast the handle. I tried to use a wire wheel and brush to remove most of the oil off the handle of the knife, but this didn't really work and I should have used a solvent here instead. I pushed a 38mm mild steel tube into a pot full of sand so that the end was poking out of the top. I then took the knife and pushed it blade first into the sand so that the shank handle was inside the tube right in the middle. This means that I can pour in the aluminium around it and it will form around the handle. 
I heated up my electric foundry again, but this time it had my steel crucible inside. I then put in some ingots of solid aluminium that I know appear since I've cast them in the past. They melt down pretty quickly and then I can use a stainless steel threaded rod to remove some of the dross and oxide floating on the surface. When it came the time to cast, I pulled the steel crucible out of the forge and basically poured it into the tube that was sticking up out of the sand and around the knife handle. I filled it up pretty much all of the way, cast the rest into ingots, and then took the knife out of the sand and cooled it down as quickly as possible in some water. This is trying to minimise the amount of heat exposure to the blade, since the blade is already hardened and if it gets heated up too much by the aluminium, then it will become soft again. Good thing about using a drill bit for this is it's high speed steel, and that's a special alloy of steel that means when it gets really hot, hopefully it doesn't temper as much and helps stop the heat treat from being ruined. Another thing that would help prevent the knife from being ruined by the heat of the aluminium would be by using a larger blade. You obviously can't heat treat the knife after you've cast the aluminium handle, since the heat treat temperature for most steels is above the melting point of aluminium, so it just wouldn't work. Once everything was cooled down, it wasn't very difficult to pull the knife out of the tube. I did the file test to check that the blade was still hard, and thankfully it was. To temper the knife, I put it back inside the forge as it was cooling down for about 2 hours. Normally 500 degrees would be too hot to temper a knife, but remember this is high speed steel, which is a special alloy that doesn't want to be tempered very easily. Once that's all cooled down, it's then time for shaping, and unfortunately the way that I cast this knife means that I've got a lot of aluminium scrap to remove, and I'm going to be doing most of this by using a farrier's rasp which is made for shoeing horses, but it's also really good at removing aluminium, since it's so coarse. In hindsight, I think a much better way to have cast the knife handle would have been to have created a mould out of foam, put it around the shank of the blade, buried it in sand, and then use lost foam casting to cast the handle. That would have meant that I'd had a much more accurate shape to cast, and I would have had a lot less material to remove. Since this knife did turn out as a success, I will most likely make more in the future with the cast aluminium handles, so if you want to check out any of them, they'll probably be in my metal casting playlist or my knife making playlist. I tried using an angle grinder with an abrasive flap disc to remove some of the metal, but I found that it generated much too much heat and didn't really remove much material. Using various different wood rasps made for woodwork, I slowly began to achieve a nice shape in my aluminium. My aim was basically to take down the chunky handle and turn it into a really nice ergonomic curved grip that would be good for hours of whittling without giving you a sore hand. Unfortunately as I cast the knife handle there was still a bit of oil left on it and that created a lot of gases as it boiled off and this created a void around the handle inside and that was uncovered when I started shaping the knife. This could have been quite easily avoided if I'd been less lazy and had cleaned off the handle using spirits. Unfortunately I was lazy and now the void is here for good. I was thinking about casting some more aluminium inside of it but I don't think that that would work very well due to the surface tension of the aluminium. Instead, I'm going to just fill it with a two-part epoxy resin, and as I mix up the resin, I also mix in a lot of the aluminium powder that's been generated by me rasping off all the excess material. In the end, this actually turned out quite nice. I smoothed out all of the deep scratches left by the rasps using an angle grinder and files. Now I've achieved the final shape of the handle, and I'm really pleased with the way that it fits really nicely into my hand. I made the finger groove slightly asymmetrical so that it fits it better. Now it's time for sanding and polishing of the knife, and I think that this is one of the most important steps that you've got to get right if you want to make the knife handle and knife look really really nice. I start off with quite a rough 200 grit emery paper which removes all of the scratches left behind by the files and makes the handle really curved and nice. I find that the rougher sandpaper grits are the most important ones since if you then move up the grit too quickly, you can't remove any of those deep scratches that have been left behind, so you need to make sure you get everything perfect on the lower grits first. After that I move on to a 400 grit sanding pad, which helps to remove some more scratches and also since it's so soft it leaves a very nice curved surface finish. It's then time to move on to wet and dry paper, and this is just some aluminium oxide wet and dry paper. I start with 600 grit and slowly work my way up all the way to 2000 grit. 
I also tried sanding the blade, but because this blade was only a test, as I was about to heat treat it, I didn't bother doing any cleanup and removing any of the scratches left by the belt sander, as I normally would, and now the blade after heat treating is really really hard, and I spent about 10 or 15 minutes trying to sand it with some 200 grit emery paper, and it was just too hard for the paper to dig in, so the blade didn't polish up very well. It's then time to give the handle a final buff to make the finish really pop and make it super shiny. To do this, I'm going to be using a buffing wheel on my bench grinder and applying some soft buffing compound. This is quite a dangerous step, especially if it's making a knife, since a bench grinder is really good at grabbing things, pulling them out of your hand and sending them flying across the room, so you've got to make sure you've got a really good grip on the knife to stop it from flying into you. If you don't fancy using a bench grinder, you can also just use some paper towels and brasso or some other type of buffing compound like that, but it is a lot slower. After that the blade is super shiny and so is the handle and I'm really pleased with the way that it turned out. I think the mirror finish aluminium handle looks absolutely great. At this point the knife looks great but it's so dull it literally can't cut anything so it's time to sharpen it and I'm going to be using these really high quality whetstones that I was sent to do that. I was sent these stones by a company called knivesandtools.co.uk and if you want to buy a similar product the link will be in the description down below to their website. In the coming weeks I'll be doing a separate video on how to sharpen knives to razor sharp using these stones. So subscribe so you can catch that video. I was really impressed with the way that these stones worked and it only took me about 15 minutes to take the knife from completely hopelessly blunt up to a complete razor sharp finish where it could slice through paper and easily shave with it. So this is what the finished knife looks like and I'm really really pleased with the way that it turned out. It's got a really nice comfortable handle and the blade is super hard and super sharp and I've already used it for quite a lot of carving and just cutting boxes and things and it turns out that it holds an edge really really well. Also the little bit that I filled in with the epoxy and aluminium mixture actually looks quite cool. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you want to see any of my other casting videos then the link will be in the description to my aluminium casting playlist or if you want to see any of my other knife making videos there will also be a link to my knife making playlist. If you want to catch early access to any of these videos then please consider supporting me on Patreon where you can get all of these videos almost a week early. Also if you want regular updates on what I'm doing between projects then please follow me on Instagram, the link is in the description down below.